Hello up bags, it's Jay Plays Games. Make sure you're liking this video guys, really help me out right now. And let's get straight into one of the most important updates you'll have seen for DayZ in a long time. Now I mean and in terms of info, we're going to be giving you a lowdown on the full release, the plans, what exactly is going to be coming to the game in the next few months and what won't be coming to the game until after full release. This really will maybe cement whether or not you're going to continue to play DayZ whether or not you'll give it a break or you may just skip it altogether. So come with me, let's go, it's the Access Show. Okay, so I'm not going to read the whole post word for word, I'm going to paraphrase a lot of it, but basically they're talking about how they're changing and defining a few things that they wanted to get in for the beta release. Now if you don't know, DayZ is still technically in its alpha state. On PC and on Xbox there are lots of features that haven't been implemented. Last December they posted a big huge roadmap and a video showing everyone what they plan to do. The core concept was to get DayZ stable this year, to actually get it working and functioning on a much more reasonable level and to add in a few key features to make the game enjoyable. If you've played DayZ like I have, you know it's absolutely amazing running around, making enemies, making friends, scrounging and surviving. It's so hardcore but really enjoyable. However, there does get a point where you're kind of left wondering, what else am I going to be doing? Vehicles and base building are going to go a long way to making this a more complete feature game. So that components are still coming into the game before it releases. But there's going to be many features that won't be in the game now until after it's 1.0. They really want to stick to this 1.0 release date, which is meant to be the end of this year. I go on to say that the beta for them is really meant to be getting what the beta it should be for all games. The game is almost feature complete and the rest of the stages from beta to full release is about polishing and getting things correct and making sure everything runs really as smoothly as possible. They are still going to be adding some features though and they're going to be doing that to make the vanilla game as enjoyable as possible for everyone. Xbox, PS4, don't forget it is coming to the PS4 once it hits 1.0 release or a little while after. In actual fact, it will be when Xbox hits its 1.0 release. So I'm warning you now, PC may leave early access before Xbox, just like other games have done, like Subnautica. At the moment, although Xbox does have lots of the core features of PC, and it is more or less the same exact game because that's why they spent so long making a brand new engine for it, there are still some things they want to improve wise performance. And you'll know from playing the Xbox version, it needs work. So what is going to be part of the beta? Let's take a look exactly. In August they put up a freeze. Everything that was in the game at that point, that was it. That was their content and that was what's going to be the 1.0 benchmark. If they didn't have any items in that feature freeze already working or even in a real good you know, testing stage, they weren't going to add it for the full release. It would come sometime after in content updates. They also talk a lot about the fact that they've been working on this game a long time. In fact, this team, this team led by this core group of people, has been doing it for five years. It has been worked on before that, but these are the guys that have been making DayZ what it is for the last few years. They need an end goal in mind, and it does mean that some features are going to be cut. Base building is going to be part of the launch. You're going to be able to make tents, you're going to be able to make watchtowers, precise placement of objects, electricity system, locking other players from accessing your base. New implementation of vehicles, improved controls, physics and network synchronization, improved damage resistance, improvements in vehicle interactions, management and maintenance. Modding support, implementation of the Steam Workshop. Until now, lots of the mods for DayZ have all come from its own launchers or from separately moddable files. With the Steam Workshop, it will make it much easier to go into the game and add your own mods, as well as experience them and try some of the new mods out. Game launcher support, specific modding tools, server files for hosting community servers. New player character features, visualization of bleeding source, character lifespan, you'll have a growing beard and you'll be able to learn soft skills. So if you don't know that if you crouch around quite a lot, you might find that you can actually get a skill that reduces your sound or something along them lines. Character restrain, so you will be able to tie people up, put handcuffs on them or rope on them. Hit reactions, so there will be much more when you're getting hit, you'll know about it. Now that was only the critical, there is more still gonna be part of the full beta release. Improvements to sound design, hidden loot stashes, not losing your weapon when you're double carrying when switching from hand slot to shoulders. Improved in-game map implementation. That is a big one for a lot of people that just can't grasp that they're going to have to use the landscape as a way to get around. 
Once upon a time, you used to get map fragments and you were able to build your own map. Dynamic spawning of loots, fruit, stones, mushrooms, and other items. That's a big one for me. Specific animations for carrying using most items, melee attacks with guns, server browser improvements, central economy improvements, and more. Now we get onto what I guess most people are gonna be going, I knew it, they're not gonna add this stuff. Honestly, if you're hating on DZ so much, why the fuck are you even watching this video? Let's challenge, let's see how many people comment that really can't stand DZ, or don't like the way it's been developed, or have got real problems with the game, comment and have actually watched the video up until this point. Just a little test for the salty fuckers. Don't get me wrong, I'm all down for games developers being better at making games. I'm totally give shit to games developers all the time. But I can see improvements in this team and I can see how much they've worked in the last year and that's why I am desperate to give them as much of a chance and get DayZ up and running as one of the best survival games out there, particularly for console. So anyway, helicopters, they're not going to be putting them in for beta 1.0 release. It will come but sometime after full release. Base building is really meant to be the end goal for players so helicopters will be added on as a new feature coming. Climbing over obstacles, this feature requires additional programming and animation support that we've decided to invest more effectively into other parts of the game. It seems mad when you play your Battle Royale games, sometimes even like PUBG, or even some of the newer ones, they all tend to have characters that can easily climb over walls. That's because they all use quite a lot of heavy sets bought from the Unreal Engine that give you them animations to work from. When you've got to build the animations completely from scratch when you're using your own engine, it's a whole new kettle of fish. Not to mention, Daisy's map is absolutely massive, much bigger than any Battle Royale map you've played. And so there's a lot more to compute exactly about objects and terrain and items on the map going along with what you're climbing. So that I haven't got a real problem not being in there. Throwing items. Throwing requires a lot of additional specialist work on physics and network synchronization. We'd rather invest that into vehicles and other features. This includes throwable weapons like grenades or smoke grenades. Bows. The implementation of bows means an introduction for completely new weapon type on 0.63 and was always a risky goal. In the end, unfortunately, not achievable in 2018. We've invested the programming time into gunplay, melee combat, vehicles and other core features that were more important. That might piss a few people off. I know a lot of people like the idea of running around being a hunter, hunting animals with your bows and being a bit more of a silent killer. But again, I don't think it's the end of the world. Nor do I think throwing items not being in the game is horrible at the moment. Remember, these features are all planned for the future. I know the future can be a piece of string that is never ending, but I generally think the progress they've made shows that they're, they're willing to get stuff done. Unfortunately, there are many network synchronization cases that we need to resolve and implementing ragdolls in combination with death animations will require more time and resources. Two-way doors, a huge quality of life improvement, changing the doors to two-way opening will require additional rework of some of the assets and is not achievable in 2018. Fishing and fish traps, decaying bodies, carrying characters, contaminated areas, item colouring, etc. These are considered flavour features and for now work on core gameplay features was prioritised ahead. Bit disappointed with the contaminated areas out of all that lot. Also fishing and fish traps, another real decent way you're going to need to get food. Without that in the game, that presents more and more of a problem, hardship, getting food initially. But contaminated areas as well, I thought that would add a real spice to the game, being able to go avoid areas or you'd have to get specialist equipment before going into it. In recap, there are no feature cuts or postponements. Anything that makes DayZ the game unique and original among the other survival games is still there. Some of the biggest trade-offs are probably bows, throwing, ragdolls and some of the flavour features that you're already used to seeing in older versions of DayZ. These trade-offs are usually allowing us to spend more time on the core features, and that again is certainly more beneficial for the future of DayZ. <sighs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of salty PC players that were kind of promised and said that this stuff would return, and it's not going to return now for a good few months. So I totally get that. I'll, re I'll retract my statement that everyone should just shut up and get up behind the game. That kind of stuff is going to piss long-time PC fans, and I don't blame them for being pissed off for that. In addition to those features, we've had to do some trimming to the content. We're only going to have two types of vehicles in the beta. The V3S truck and the Lada 4x4. As for weapons, compared to our original goal for beta, we're not going to be able to implement the following in time. So no Magnum, no Red 9, no IZH-43 shotgun, no SKS, no CR-527, no Winchester 70, 
any other firearm currently available in 62 but not the stress test branch. In addition, we've done our best to have each firearm type from 0.62 represented in the game and additional variety in firearms will be provided with content updates after 1.0 where we should have more animation resources available at hand. Again, that, that might piss a few people off. I think a lot of people were looking for more robust features with weapons and items. It makes looting and scrounging even sweeter when you come across a real unique gun. Now, if you don't know, some features were always going to be planned for after full release. They were never going to be put in the beta or it'd be something they were aiming to do. So alongside what I just told you, don't expect any vehicle modification for your new vehicles. That won't come until much later. Barricading is not going to happen yet either. Birds as an animal, and definitely no planes and no bikes or motorbikes. Now in terms of firearms, all these guns, if you don't see any of these ones on the actual test servers right now, they won't be part of the beta release. So what are they going to be doing then if they're dropping this content? Well, they're balancing every part of the game. They're going to do a huge amount of bug fixing, which we, I think, can all say it needs. Polishing and improving the general feeling as you players have been playing DayZ. They are confident though that the beta and the 1.0 release is still going to happen this year. So big news guys, big news. I think that really will make you whether or not choose to buy this game if you've still been following it and not wondering maybe is it going to have the things you want in the next few months. And like I said for some people that have bought the game already it will dictate whether or not they're going to put any more time and effort into it right now or whether or not they will actually won't visit it again until full release. Let me know in the comment section how you're feeling about Daisy at the moment. So the next part of the post does detail more about base building. The stress test servers that were on PC this week or last weekend showed lots of the base building in action. You've probably seen a lot of content creators doing it. You're going to be able to build two elements. You're going to be able to build a fence and a watchtower. They're the main ones. There are portable mesh barriers, but that's the main thing you're going to be looking to build is your fences and watchtowers. You'll get a construction kit and you'll place it in an outline, the position and layout of objects. From there, you're able to add building materials such as logs, planks, nails or metal sheets. And by using the proper tool and a user action, you can turn them into actual parts of the fences or watchtowers. Similarly to the watchtower with its multiple floors, and the fence includes an optional platform. Upgrades to both are available in terms of camouflage and passive defense. A fence can be turned into a gate as there has to be some way to get in or out. The opening is wide enough for a truck as well. The gate can be kept closed from unwanted visitors by utilizing a multi-dial combination look with easable, easily shareable custom codes. Of course, the codes can be cracked as everything in DayZ, it can be broken with a proper tool. Although this may take some considerable amount of time. That goes for dismantling actions as well. So when you build your base, players will be able to do damage to it and they will be able to try dismantling it, but it's gonna take a considerable amount of time. Currently, they're in the process of solving issues with the lifetime of constructed objects and intentional server hopping into the base. Especially the second one is tricky as I don't want to introduce some unnecessary artificial countermeasures or out of place actions which could potentially harm the unique Daisy experience. That's a really good point, I never thought about that. You go up, you rock up somewhere, you see a player's base sitting there, big, massive. You log off that server, you go to another server, you move 100 yards up the map, and bam, when you spawn back in on the server you've just done, you're gonna be in the middle of someone's base. I'm guessing that you'll have your bases, but if players spawn into it, there must be other ways that you can keep stuff more lockable. Maybe there's gonna be a zone that once you complete a circle of fences, that it stops other players spawning in there. That's gonna be a really hard one to crack, and that one's certainly gonna be a worry. Base buildings as a whole is a broad set of activities. Throw horticulture, food preparation, obtaining water, stationary crafting, storage, building a shelter, engineering, electricity grid and others into the mix and you get your own very base. All of that has to blend in well with the environment and I'm excited to see the wide variations of bases you will come up with. So I mentioned maps that were in the game a long time ago. Well, they're coming back. You're going to basically be able to find it in the world and pick it up and take a look at it. Now, word warning, this is what happens when you look at your map. So other players can see you doing it and think, damn, I've got to kill your ass just to get hold of that map. Now, there's going to be different maps. It's not going to be just one map pinpointing every military base on the game. There's going to be a tourist map, and that's what's going to come up first. It's going to have the world in great detail. It's going to show pubs, stores, offices, medical centers, police, and fire departments, as well as all the tourist trails. So I think that's pretty good. I think that's going to be pretty adequate knowing exactly where you're going. I like the way it's not going to certainly just put a waypoint on a map and say you are here. You're still going to have to master reading a map, which is a life skill. 
The map feature at its core is the same as it did in Armour, which means any community map that is packed using the upcoming DayZ tools is also supported. So that's the first, maybe we'll get a more detailed one that will list certain military bases and stuff like that. The rest of the update talks about the sounds, how there's new ones going out over the stress test branch, and that is pretty much it guys. So big huge news about the future of DayZ. Everything I've said to you guys for the last few months is happening in terms of it's going to be full release and it's coming out of early access this year. But for Xbox, don't expect that for a few months after, I'd say early 2019, and that's when the PS4 scheduled launch is going to happen as well. It's going to piss off long time PC fans, I do understand that. Lots of features that maybe have been taken out of the game, you're wondering why they just haven't been put back into it. But I think all the other features that are there really lend itself to more roleplay action and give you more of a focus, something to work towards, rather than just going around getting gear and killing people. Being able to build your own base is a key component of survival games, and this is the step in the right direction. I'm still going to be playing this game, but I will probably leave it now a good few weeks. What I am going to do though is definitely show you content on the PC. I am going to jump on the test live servers the minute they're up and start showing you the stress test ones. I want to show you more what's coming. I feel like I'm missing the trick not doing it. I've got a decent PC to show you guys that content as well. So expect proper news updates about DayZ coming from me. Expect showing you new features that are going to be happening. All the info that's happening with Xbox and any of these features that are put onto Xbox, of course, I will again show you that stuff as well. I am Jay Plays Games. If you like this video, giving you the information you need to know, press like, hit me up with a comment down below, and I'll see you rat bags later on.